Unit 13A will be our introduction to wave optics. Optics is the study of light, and light is actually a wave. It has wave-like characteristics and behaves like other wave-like phenomena. Light is a transverse wave, and what's actually oscillating in this transverse wave is the electric field and the magnetic field in that particular region of space. So that is why light waves are called electromagnetic waves. They are an oscillation in the electric field and the magnetic field. And these waves travel with a wave speed and the speed of light waves we call the speed of light C, which is this constant value 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's how fast light waves travel in a vacuum. There are many different types of light and we categorize these types of light by where they fall on the electromagnetic spectrum. We use this spectrum to categorize all kinds of different types of light waves, like many waves that you've heard of like microwaves, radio waves, uh, visible light like the colors that you see in a rainbow or in flowers, and also ultraviolet waves or x-rays are also all forms of light waves. All electromagnetic waves travel with a wave speed equal to the speed of light, but they can have different wavelengths. If the wave speed is the wavelength times the frequency, when we change the wavelength of an electromagnetic wave, we must also correspondingly change the frequency. So this electromagnetic spectrum really just tells you how different light waves can have different wavelengths and frequencies. On the left side of the electromagnetic spectrum, you see that we have long wavelengths. And on the right side, you see that we have short wavelengths. And these wavelengths can actually span a pretty long distance. Radio waves can have wavelengths up to 100 meters, but gamma rays or x-rays are down to the atomic scale. We're talking nanometer wavelengths. On the other hand, if we think about these light waves, thinking about their frequency, on the left side of the electromagnetic spectrum, we would have very low frequency electromagnetic waves. And on the right side, we would have very high frequency electromagnetic waves. This small little sliver of the electromagnetic spectrum at about 100 nanometers to 1,000 nanometers is called the visible light spectrum. And within the visible light spectrum, different colors of light show up as different wavelength electromagnetic waves. That's how our eyes are able to detect different colors as it picks up different wavelengths of light. And our eyes can only detect light within this visible portion of the spectrum actually. All the other light we can't see, like ultraviolet rays coming from the sun, we can't actually see those or describe a color that they are. And infrared waves that might be coming from a hot uh, driveway in the summer, we can't actually see those infrared waves either. And within the visible spectrum, white light, whenever we see white light, that's actually a combination of all of the different possible colors of light within the visible spectrum. Here's another image to help you visualize how different colors show up as different wavelengths. We can see that the purple colors have a much shorter wavelength than the red colors, which have a much longer wavelength. And remember, for the visible spectrum, we're talking about light waves with a wavelength on the scale of nanometers, 100 nanometers or so. So make sure that you know how to use your metric prefixes because these wavelengths you will still want to convert to the standard unit of meters. Light waves can experience optical events. For example, reflection is a process where light waves encounter an interface or a surface and bounce off of that surface at an angle that equals the angle that they came in at. This law of reflection describes how the incident angle relates to the reflected angle. If we think about a light wave coming toward a surface here, heading down and to the right, when it hits that mirror, it will be reflected back upward and to the right. And the angle that it's reflected back at will equal the angle that it came in at. However, it's important to note when we are talking about these angles for optics, you will always want to measure the angle with respect 
to this dashed line. This we call the normal axis because it is normal to the surface. It is perpendicular to the actual mirror. So this dashed line is the normal line, and that is the line that we measure the incident angle and the reflected angle with respect to. Whatever surface causes the optical event, we will call that boundary between the air and the mirror itself an interface. Another type of optical event that light can experience is called refraction. And this is when light travels into a new medium and it appears to bend. This bending occurs because the light wave actually slows down or speeds up depending on which medium it's traveling through. Remember, for sound waves or waves in a string under tension, the wave speed only depended on the medium through which it was traveling. And that is the case for light as well. The speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, is only the speed of light in a vacuum. If the light is traveling through air or water or glass, then that light will slow down a little bit because it has to actually make its way through the glass. Of course, this is on a time scale that we would never notice as a human, but the light wave does actually slow down when it travels from air into glass. And that's what leads to this bending that you see in this laser here. The light waves are traveling out of the laser into the glass and slowing down for a sec, and then when they exit the prism again, they go back into air and speed back up. The degree to which a light wave will slow down when it enters into a new surface is measured by the index of refraction of a material. We use the letter n to track the index of refraction, and the higher the n number, the slower a light wave will travel through some medium. The index of refraction can be solved for by taking the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and dividing it by the speed of light traveling through that medium. So if you have an n of 1, that would mean that you were in a vacuum because the speed of light would be 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and the fastest that light can possibly travel is the speed of light, c. So if we had c over c, we would get an n of 1. But any other time when we, are travel when we have a light wave traveling through a material, it's going to be a little bit slower than that. So this v number will get smaller than the speed of light in a vacuum, and that will cause our n to be some number greater than 1. And every single material in the world will always have an index of refraction greater than 1. So you can think about the light waves with a wave front diagram. Here we have a low end material, and on the other side we have a high end material. In a low index of refraction, our light waves can travel fast. In a high index of refraction, our light wave waves will slow down. Here are some examples of typical index of refraction values for some common materials. For example, air has an index of refraction of 1.0003. Water has an index of refraction of about 1.3, and glass has an index of refraction of about 1.5. Many plastics are somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5 as well. We can use the law of refraction to solve for how much a light wave will bend as it travels from one medium to another, and we'll need to know the indices of refraction and the angle at which the incident light ray hits the interface. We can use the law of refraction to determine how much a light ray will bend when it travels from one medium to another. The law of refraction is also known as Snell's law, and it says n1 sine theta1 equals n2 sine theta2. This refraction diagram can help you keep track of some of these variables. n1 is the index of refraction of the medium through which the incident ray is traveling. n2 is the index of refraction through which the refracted ray will enter. Theta 1 is the incident angle. It's the angle at which the incident light ray hits the interface. And theta 2 is the refracted angle. It's the angle at which the light ray will enter the new medium. And remember, these theta values are always measured relative to that normal axis, which is perpendicular to the interface. 
So if we're traveling from a low end material to a high end material like we are in this case, the light ray will travel will bend toward the normal as it slows down entering that new medium. If it were traveling from a low end if it were traveling from a high end material to a low end material, then the light wave would bend away from the normal. The index of refraction of a material is related to the wavelength of the light that is traveling through that material. So that means that if we have different wavelengths of light, they will bend more or less than other wavelengths of light. This separation of different wavelengths of light as they travel through a medium is called dispersion. Dispersion explains why a glass prism separates white light into all of its different constituent colors. Dispersion also explains why rainbows happen because as sunlight, which is white light, it has all the colors, hits raindrops in the air or mist particles, some of the light rays will bend differently than others. The red light might bend a little less than the blue light and this causes for a rainbow to appear in the sky. Another interesting phenomenon is total internal reflection, which is ultimately an idea related to refraction. If we have an incident light ray coming toward an interface like we do here, right now the interface is vertical and the normal axis is sideways. If we have that incident light ray coming in, the refracted light ray will go through the other side. But if we change our incident angle so that it's a very large angle, eventually the refracted ray is going to get trapped inside of the material. It's going to have a refracted angle at 90 degrees such that no light waves actually exit the material. They stay stuck either on the interface or they bounce off and reflect off of that interface. And we now have a situation where we have total internal reflection. All of the light inside of this material, material on the left cannot actually exit into the faster medium material on the right. If our incident angle exceeds some critical angle, then we will have exceeded the threshold needed to be in the total internal reflection condition. We can solve for the critical angle needed for total internal reflection with this equation down here. It just requires an inverse sine and the index of refraction of both materials involved. Total internal reflection explains how we can use endoscopes to look into a person's stomach. It also explains how fiber optic cables are able to transmit electrical signals and information signals with very little losses. None of the light waves can ever escape these cables. And also total internal reflection explains why many gemstones have their own special shine. We can use refraction diagrams to represent how a light wave will bend when it travels from one medium to another. The way how you draw a refraction diagram is you start by drawing the interface between the two materials. Sometimes people call this a surface or a boundary. Then you want to draw your incident light ray coming in and striking the interface. Wherever that light ray strikes the interface, you want to draw a normal axis perpendicular to the interface itself. So we have the incident light ray so far, the boundary, and the normal axis. Then you want to label this angle of incidence here, and you can give it a number if you have a specific number for the problem. And then you can use the law of refraction to calculate what the refraction angle will be, and you can draw the refracting and you can draw the refracted ray as your last step entering into the new material. Remember to label your refraction angle theta 2 with a number as well if you have one for that problem. So that'll cover everything for unit 13a. I'll see you in the next one.